Yeah? Okay, thank you very much for coming. Um, the name of the series is Island Bagatelle. My name is Sudan Everybody knows me. <laughs> um, right, so most of my work um, is based, uh, at least since 2007, is based on Grenada's history. I had an aha moment one day when I realized that American children, for example, can point to Washington Cross in the Delaware, the famous painting, and know which part of history that is. I'm sure British children can do the same, and so on. And in Grenada, we cannot, because A, we do not have a national collection, we don't seem to have any kind of national type paintings that you can point at for the children to know which part of the history it's from. So I decided to, to work towards that. We have a lot of history, so I'm pulling that bit by bit to create series. This series is a two-part. It started last year when I created about uh, 15, 15 or so pieces this size. I created them in London over four days. And um, it was called the R Conversation, speaking to reparation, the question of reparation from the Caribbean wanting monies from the colonial um, entities for slavery and what have you. Um, and this, this small series was shown in two exhibitions in London. Um, the second exhibition was at a gallery just walking distance from the National Gallery. And I found that to be, for me, quite satisfying. Um, it would have been better if it was at the National Gallery, but there we are. <laughs> Simply because of the connection with Grenada and the National Gallery at Trafalgar Square. For those who do not know, um, John Julius Angustine, or Angustine, his founding collection, his personal collection, is the founding collection of the National Gallery at Trafalgar Square, London. And he was in charge and or part owner of and or the lawyer or whatever of responsible for a couple of plantations in Grenada. So at least some part of his revenue was generated out of Grenada. Whether that went to buy a couple of his paintings, I do not know. But there is the connection, tenuous as it is. The rest of the series, six images. Um, references a book written in 1829, printed and written in Grenada by F. W. N. Bailey, B. A. Y. L. E. Y. And I guess he had nothing else to do, so he was writing a bunch of enigmas, essentially puzzles, where you have to figure out the name of the estate to which he's referring. <laughs> he wrote it in six parts. Each part is a parish. So at least you have that. You know it's in the, this particular parish. <laughs> you can figure that out. Uh -huh. The index at the back of the book um, lists the places by parish, but it doesn't tell you which parish in which order. So you really have to figure it out. Uh -huh. okay. um, so each of the paintings reference um, each of the parts that he did in his book, his enigmas. Each painting has the parish, the estates per parish embedded in each painting. The initial letter for the for the estates are in there in um, English wallpaper. I cut out the, the initial cap and I put it in there. What you see is a combination of, so it's a collage mixed media piece. Mm -hmm. What you see is the, like for example, that's a, I think that's a G for Granton Estate, I think. Anyway, it's here, I think it's G, anyway. It's here, so you see that the letter for the estate and you would have seen that I would have written some. And these other symbols are African Adinkra symbols. Mm -hmm. And as you know, this was done in 1829, so it would have been post-abolition, but pre-emancipation. So there was still slavery in Grenada, mm -hmm. yeah? So I thought it a good idea to put in the Adinkra symbols, because that would have been the only way I could document African presence on the piece, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, this particular image here that repeats in the six pieces, um, comes from the front cover of the book, which actually has a crown, which I believe might be St. Edward's crown. Anyway, it's a British crown, and the British crowns tend to have a ball with a cross on the top and the front of the, of the, of the piece. And basically, it's the cross pâté, they call it. Other people call it an iron cross, and it's on the mound, which is the, the globe, the world, you know, domination of the world kind of thing. And I thought it most interesting, because this particular piece, without the mound, 
which it has another piece. It's actually an adinkra symbol, meaning it's a good luck charm. It keeps away evil. So I thought, oh, how very exciting. Here we have the adinkra symbol that keeps away evil. And then we have the British symbol of, of domination. So here we are. You know, so I think that alone inspired me. I must put the adinkra symbols on this. So it's a political piece. <laughs> political statement. So what you see there are not Christian symbols. These are actually adinkra symbols, West African symbols. Yes, right? Um, the little flowery things um, are okra leaves that are present on other, another bit of adinkra stuff that I took from. But the major symbols on each of the, pain, on each of the paintings come from a, an 1825 or 1827 piece of mourning cloth. So it's a cloth that was done in black and white in West Africa and taken to the British Museum. That's where it's housed now. So I thought it was, you know, pull all of that stuff together. Hey, Ken and bring it to the British Museum. Somebody took it from there and put it in the British Museum. <laughs> um, and usually these are Dinka symbols on the fabric, they're hand done. So what they do is they cut the patterns on bits of um, calabash and they use that to hand print everything on. So I didn't hand print, but I just um, used my projector to project part of the fabric onto this and then outlined and painted it on. Because I was doing painting and not pressing and not thing. So, so that is where all of this is. Um, the loud colors is because well, we're in the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. So we, we are accustomed to loud colors. The sunshine and everything makes everything more beautiful. Um, and you also have to remember that apart from the sun on, on our colors, we are a mix of cultures. So you get all of that. Because the color I'm assuming they use in Africa, I haven't been yet, but I'm assuming that they use a lot of color in Africa, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. So all of that is how we are, what we are, and how we dress and how we do what we do. We have to get it from somewhere. So this is what is it all of here. So each painting, as I said, represents a particular parish, um, not having to do anything with signs, mind you. But St. George's ended up being the large one, <laughs> the largest one, and not St. Andrew, sorry about that. Um, Again, so it's got the, the African symbols, it's got the Caribbean colors or the Pan-African, Pan-Caribbean colors. Um, it's got a lot of symbolism in it. It's got the estates as listed in his book in 1829. Everyone has the estate that was listed, it's in there. And that's it. Again, a part of history coming forward. Um, Susan has suggested, and I will take that suggestion and run with it, that since the book is out of print and out of copyright, because I mean 1829, um, I should redo the book and use my work in it and bring the history mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. So I will take that on as the challenge. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you.